Hey guys, I'm here at the Prophecy Watchers Conference in Orlando, and I'm getting to interview some speakers that are going to be speaking at the conference. And you want to make sure you tune in. There's a lot of good speakers. Um, go to prophecywatchers.com, and you can get all the lineup and watch all the speakers. But I, I nabbed one of them, and this is, is Dr. Andy Woods, and many of you guys know him. And a lot of people get watch you. They get a lot of good information from you. And Andy, what do you, tell the audience what you're going to be teaching on and, and speaking about. Well, I get a chance to speak twice. So one of them is going to be on roughly Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. Okay. It's, to me, it's one of the clearest yeah. uh, prophecies about a global government yeah. existing before Jesus comes back. Okay. And it'll be tyrannical. Yeah. But the good news is, it's overthrown in 42 months, so. Yeah, short-lived, <laughs> yeah. right, yeah. Evil gets its day in the sun, but not long. Right. So I get a chance to talk about that, and the second one is, um, as you know, the rapture is attacked, pre-trib rapture, is attacked yeah. by everybody. Right, more than ever. More than ever, which to me shows me it's true. Okay. You don't, you don't counterfeit a $3 bill, right? Right. <laughs> So Good there's, point. A, there's a prophecy Jesus gave to the church at Philadelphia, you know, because you've endured patiently. Yeah. I will keep you from the hour of trial that's about to come upon the whole earth. So yeah. we're just going to do a word for word analysis of that. You know, what's the hour? What's, what's the earth? Right. What does it mean when it says about to? And I hope uh, at the end of the session, people will grow in their confidence that Jesus is coming to get us before the wrath of God hits this planet. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Hey, so since you're on that topic, let me ask you a question that we've had to deal with, the attack on the rapture, okay? So we, we just heard Eric Metaxas get out there on an interview and say that we who believe in a rapture are like escapists, it's the rescue rapture, and it, it, there's no basis in scripture. What happened? What's going on with this, man? And, and are you seeing more attacks on this? Yeah, I'm seeing more attacks from people that I normally agree with on stuff. Yeah. Against the rapture, but you know, I generally like a lot of the things Eric Metaxas yeah, says, right. limited government and all that. Right. But I watch that and I'm like, I said to myself, have you ever have you ever heard of uh, Tim LaHaye? <laughs> okay, Tim LaHaye through his Left Behind series promoted the rapture more than anybody. Yeah. But he's the same guy. And you're, you're a Liberty grad, right? Yeah, I am a Liberty grad. He's, he's the same guy that gave to Jerry Falwell the idea of the moral majority. Yes. Which brought right. Ronald, Ronald Reagan to office. Right. So you, you, you can be a patriot and believe in the rapture at right. the same time. They're not, you know, contradictory ideas. And I was thinking to myself, you never heard of Francis Schaeffer? Right. Labrie Institute? Right. I mean, he did more for the cause of culture than Eric Metaxas will ever do. Yeah, And good he point. was a strong pre tribulation Yeah. So I don't know what's wrong with these political activist types. They're they're acting like our view um, uh, contradicts patriotism. Right. But historically, that's just not true. Exactly. So it's like they're just making up a narrative. Yes. Okay. So I'm glad you said that. So what I'm seeing, and maybe you can speak to this. I'm going a little rabbit trail, guys. So I got Andy here. So I want to. I want him to talk about this. So the guy he was interviewing, Eric Metaxas was interviewing this guy, and he started, he mentioned the Seven Mountain Mandate. And, and that kind of told me everything of how they view things. I'm noticing a trend in Christianity, uh, a growing trend of we're going to take the culture back, Christianize the culture, create a theocracy, and, and, and then we're going to hand over the kingdom to Jesus. Yeah. We're, explain to people where that's coming from. Well, the first thing I'd say, how, how's that working for you? Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly, right. But the Seven Mountain Mandate, uh, it's basically post-millennialism. Yeah. Where post meaning Jesus comes back at the end of the kingdom age that the church will have brought in. Yeah. So we're going to kind of not restrain evil, which I think we are supposed to do. Right. You know, slow, it, slow down its progress right. as the restrainer. Yes, absolutely. But we're actually setting up the kingdom. Okay. And so when you hear people talking about these seven mountains that we're supposed to conquer. Right. I mean, is that what Jesus told us to do in the Great Commission? Uh, hey, get out there and conquer these seven mountains. He never said anything like that. No. So it's a post-millennial theology, you know, read into the Great Commission. I, I, don't, I don't know if you don't mind me mentioning names. No, go ahead. No, Char mention names. Charlie Kirk yeah. uh, believes in the seven mountain mandate. Yep. I, I, yep. 
And the truth of the matter is the only seven mountains I know about in the Bible are connected to the beast. Right. So I don't want to be involved right. in a seven mountain mandate. So if you want to recruit me to restrain evil yeah. uh, and slow down its progress before the rapture, I'm on board. But once I start moving into this uh, post-millennial seven mountain mandate, uh, count me out. Yeah, no, I, I, I notice it. And you know, the interesting thing, Andy, and maybe you can speak to this. We, we as Bible-believing Christians, believe in the, uh, uh, the future of Israel and tribulation, we're now being lumped in with Christian nationalism, which a lot of the dominionists are part of that Christian nationalism. Why do you think the left is lumping us in that category? Well, I think they're setting us up for persecution. Okay. I mean, they want to basically throw all of us in jail and yeah. actually kill us. Yeah. And you can't have a war, physical war like that, until you have a, a war of propaganda. Mm. So they're putting all of us into this category of domestic terrorists. Yeah. And they want to treat us all like they did the J6 people. Right. You know, suspend the Constitution. Yeah. Um, but what's, you know, what's sad is to watch the Dominionists trash the rapture. Because I think the Dominionists understand that the rapture is not going to fit NAR theology. Right. It doesn't fit. Good, good point. So they've got to yeah. trash us. Wow. Wow. So it, it's the setup of persecution then. I, okay, man, I can see it. Because they're making the, the, the Christian nationalists, they're the extreme. They're the, we're, they're the crazies. We're, like we're some Taliban, Christian Taliban, you know? <laughs> yeah. Nuts, man. But you can see it forming, right? No. Okay, Here, I got another question. I left my Uzi in the tire. Right, right exactly, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's nuts, man. Yeah. But you can see they have to marginalize you to, to do those kinds of things. So here's what I want to ask. I want the audience to know, because a lot of people are watching all over the country and other parts of the world. Tell, tell the remnant out there what's going on in Texas, because they know from me what's going on in California, and it's nuts, okay, about the church, yeah. and, and particularly... What's the climate like in the church in Texas and the people's response to the gospel? What's going on where you're at in the world? Well, most people may not know this about me, but I grew up in California. Yeah. I spent the first 30 years of my life in California, so I, I know California. Yeah. You know, and most people don't remember this, but California used to be a red state. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's right. Where, uh, Richard Nixon, uh -huh. uh, Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan, yeah, Cetera came from California. Mm -hmm. In fact, George Herbert Walker Bush carried California in the 1988 presidential election. Yeah, amazing. I know. You think that? And wow. so I can tell you how they flipped it. They flipped it through illegal immigration. Yeah. Okay. okay. And they changed the population of the voting population of the state. Sure. Sure. To people that come in and want handouts and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Not that I'm against immigration. I'm just for legal. Legal. You know, use the front door. Right. Know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So now that I have that background and I've moved to Texas, I'm seeing the identical pattern. Really? Texas is a generally a conservative, you know, red state, mm -hmm. as was California. But there is an aggressive, uh, and I mean aggressive, attempt to change the population the same way. Wow through illegal immigration. Yeah. And people say, oh, come on, Andy, that will never happen. Well, I saw it happen. Yeah. I saw it happen in my lifetime. Right. And what people need to understand is once Texas flips to, you know, purple, blue, whatever, yeah. mathematically, it's impossible yeah. for a, to ever see a Donald Trump or a Ronald right. Reagan in the Oval Office. So yeah. that's what I'm seeing happening. Wow. And um, if I didn't know Bible prophecy that things are moving towards an orchestrated conclusion by God's hand, I would be a, a basket case. <laughs> That's why a lot of our patriot friends are yeah. always foaming at the mouth and upset. Yeah, whereas yeah. we as pre-trib dispensational types are yeah, not. Right. Because we take the Bible literally and we know where God is pushing things. Exactly, exactly. Speak to the, 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 the climate of the church in, in, you can speak to Texas, but speak to maybe the nation. What, what trends are you seeing maybe that disturb you are there any positive things that you're seeing? Well, to me, the biggest um, enemy opponent is this social justice oh, mentality. Yeah. yeah. Where you can go to a church and you can hear more about universal health care and climate change and racial reconciliation, you know, than the gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so 
not so much with the older people, but particularly the younger people, they they gravitate towards this sort of we got to liberate the oppressors. Yeah. So that's why a lot of them um, have now moved into a pro-Palestinian mindset. Where that they, crazy? They think Israel is the oppressor. No, in that it's nuts. Israel's about the size of New Jersey. Right. You know. On a right. Path. Exactly. It's crazy. So so we understand the great apostasy. We're we're with remnant believers here. Tell people out there that's listening that are remnant believer, what are we supposed to do until the Lord comes back? Are we supposed to throw on the white sheet, wait on the roof, and do nothing? What do we? What is our mandate as believers as we wait for the rapture? Well, it's interesting when you look at all of the uh, predictions in the epistles about yeah. apostasy, and there was actually a dissertation done about this in 1958, roughly, at Dallas Seminary, trying yeah. to figure out what's the number one topic addressed in the epistles. Yeah. Number two on the list, according to this guy's work, was apo- warnings of apostasy. Really? Yeah. Wow, so that's it's amazing. Just, it's a massive subject. Yeah. I mean, entire books of the Bible, Second Peter, Jude. Yeah, good point. Uh, Second Timothy were written yeah. about it. And Paul just says it's coming. Yeah. He doesn't say, here's five steps to stop it. Right. Okay, he says it's right. coming. So to me, it's inevitable. Yeah. But what he tells us to do in the midst of it is just to be faithful. Yeah. Amen. You know, um, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 2. What's, yeah. what's required of a steward is faithfulness. Amen. So wherever people are at yeah. uh, in service, just be faithful with what God has put in front of you. Amen. And um, just understand that we're spitting against the wind. Yeah. I mean, literally here with all this. You're wind. right. Uh, we're, we're, we're going uphill, but that's okay. Yeah. That's what we yeah. signed up for. That's right. Uh, that's what God said would happen. So Amen. I would just say, and at the Bema, Bema seat, we're not rewarded for success. Right. You know, the judgment seat of rewards, we're yeah. rewarded for faithfulness. Amen. So I would just encourage people to be faithful to whatever God has put in front of you. Amen. Amen. Good advice. How, Andy, can they find you? What's your website? What, what, where are you located in Texas so that they can find you? Yeah, I'm uh, in Sugarland, Texas, which is southwest Houston. I pastor a church called Sugarland Bible Church. So they can find all our stuff archived at slbc.org. And then I have uh, Andy Woods Ministries. Okay. You can find that andywoodsministries.org. You can, if you put in Andy Woods Ministries, you can find us on YouTube, Rumble, yeah, uh, Facebook. Uh, we have a podcast. So all of our recent stuff is constantly being uploaded and all of our past archives are constantly being uploaded. We have an app you can find in the app store. Good. The Andy Woods Ministry should Good. take it all that. Awesome. Well, guys, check his ministry out. You'll learn a lot. Andy, Andy is, is super intelligent. His IQ is like on the level of Einstein, okay? Oh, wow. This guy uh, went to law school and then he became a pastor. and not, So he knows a lot. And so anyway, check his ministry out. It'll bless you and share it with the other people, okay? All right, guys, we'll see you next time.